Cultural. Tenemos el gran honor de tener los delegados de la Yucatán, los delegados maya, uh, entre ellos y ellas poetas, escritores, uh, re relatadores de cuentos, y em vamos a empezar allí. Y luego con los músicos, porque los músicos decidieron que necesitaban gasolina para seguir adelante. Entonces, se están echando su gasolina y mientras que se echen su gasolina, vamos a com comenzar así poco en poquito, ¿verdad? ¿verdad? Y agarrando más fuerza. So, welcome to the Cultural Hour. We're very, very honored and, and extremely privileged to have such distinguished uh, cultural workers artists, poets, musicians with us today. It's, it's an embarrassment, I've been telling people, it's an embarrassment of wealth that we, we have with us today. But I love to be embarrassed, so this is wonderful. We're going to start with um, Feliciano Sanchez Chan, who spoke earlier on one of our panels. Um, Feliciano Sanchez Chan is a founding professor of the School of Literary Creation in Maya at the State Center of Fine Arts in the Ministry of Education in Yucatán, México. Y trajo con él unos de sus poesías. He brought some poems with him to read, so please help me welcome el maestro Sanchez Chan. Yashpal In Wichan Sokusi hil kiashchan shibilpal Tu sebla kiltas unohochilu hachkich kele mil titulakal unalilakol Westkup tu yokol umumuntab utuch yetelukupil shiash halalche Takun lik es nal Tukinil pa kalile Kawosho on tik Yetelu yishi male yana pak ikumpel chang kol Tutanka bilk otoch Yana tsaik ukaba ite Uki kedin champalil Leti binu yal ton bishkun binu kustalk palil Watumen hachkuyan talunalil Watumen hachminan uhek Primogénito Esposo mío, ha nacido ya nuestro primogénito varón. Trae pronto la más grande y hermosa de todas las mazorcas de tu troje. Corta encima de ella con cuchillo de yashjalalche su tierno cordón umbilical. Guarda celoso la mazorca hasta el día de la siembra. La habrás de desgranar y harás con ella en el patio de nuestra casa una pequeña milpa que con certeza llamarás la sangre de mi primer niño. Ella nos dirá, según si la cosecha es abundante o magra, el destino de nuestro hijo. Y de este libro recién publicado desde Monterrey, que es eh, un libro de poesía para niños, voy a compartirles muy rapidamente dos que dice, y a propósito de esos sonidos muy parecidos entre, eh, eh, en la lengua maya. Mise mabin miskachi, kach uch vine, mise mabin misi, Cumpel mis chen bintanu mise tu nactanta hub batu belu mise yetel juntul chanchoe kabintututs lukota. Leten beklaik mise sansa malkuman umis 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 ichnaj yetelune. Kumanaptik chanchoe kukakik mis yetelune tu mentakuts onik. Beituno mise. Mabin mis cachi, vale cuyubi cuba misile, shulultan uman umis, 
umis, umis y chnah y etelune. El gato no era gato. Se dice que antiguamente el gato no era gato. Era escoba que mientras barría se encontró de pronto con un ratoncito que al instante se tragó. Es por eso que hoy el gato con su cola barre que barre y barre todos los días al interior de la casa y siempre que ve al ratón barre que barre y barre con su cola con hartas ganas de cazarlo. Así entonces, el gato antes no era gato, era escoba convertida en gato, mas al sentirse escoba, barre que barre y barre con su cola al interior de la casa. Voy a terminar, según dijeron, el tiempo es muy corto con este último poema que dice... Eh, que dice, que dice Chanchnokol, Chanchnokole, y Chiluwenele Tunay Taje Hachbinkas Ukaba, Beitu no, Tanunaye katukesha ukaba, beklai ukabae sats un sats motzol mots, sats un sats motzol mots, sats un sats motzol mots. El pequeño gusano. El pequeño gusano mientras dormía soñó que su nombre era muy feo, así que en sueños el nombre se cambió. Hoy su nombre es Estira, estira, encoge, encoge, estira, estira, encoge, encoge, estira, estira, encoge, encoge. Estos son dos de los poemas que están en este libro, digo, recién publicado, Le engañé a mi gato, Tintusa en Gualamis. Traigo apenas unos 10 ejemplares, más o menos, de 30 dólares, si les parece, para arriba, el que quiera donar, ahí disponibles. Muchas gracias. Me agarraron en la media mordida. Disculpa. Bueno, muchas gracias, Jorge, este, Feliciano Sánchez Chan. Muchas gracias. El que sigue es el maestro Jorge Miguel uh, Cocompech. Y para recordarles, um, el maestro Cocompech es uh, maya linguist, lingüista, escritor, autor, y relatador de cuentos, linguist, writer, author, and storyteller. Muchas gracias. Bueno, andaba yo preocupado porque le dije que sí, y resulta que no traje mi poemario, pero lo traje aquí en estas cosas. No, está muy chiquita la letra, pero voy a hacer el esfuerzo de poner esos telescopios. Este texto... Se llama, es pequeñito, El secreto de los pájaros. Mashukat ukiki yubi kukai chicho, makabe tu nupu. Che, kabet, kabe tu paquekakulul che. El que quiera disfrutar el canto de los pájaros, no necesita jaulas, sino sembrar árboles. Están muy breves. Este dice así. Aquilcane, que no nacal uchun cululche, ucatu chukiku pishan. Chembale a kilkane ma uyoheli upishan kulurche ma tian ichiluchunil. Tian, tian, 
La enredadera, cuando escala el tronco de un árbol, pretende atrapar su alma. Lo que ignora esta serpiente vegetal es que el alma de un árbol no está al interior de su corteza, sino en el canto de los pájaros. Este tenía un nombre, un nombre que no me gustó porque no busca, a veces uno hace un poema y para poner el nombre es como para poner, no, buscar el nombre de un chamaco. ¿Qué quieres? No, y la mujer, no, que sea Damián y tú quieres que sea Jorge, Yo, en fin, es un lío. Entonces, por mucho tiempo este poema llevó el nombre de, de algo que no quería, pero finalmente el tiempo me dijo que se llame Payalchi Plegaria. Y creo que así quedó. Espero que no cambie. Injum, injum, utiala kans, ken mak abetanushita. Y chuluche hingah kambal, tita kanech. Wabashku yaya kuntikin olal. Wakulak en ken puksikal tumem ishop, leti, yetelu miatsil. Kuchukik inum ya, yetelu shiknal, yabach. At chio tincel. Vale, le ti cubisic inum ya, te tus cubim basa le pala lobo. Te tus cubasa lobo, y chilunak humpel uchven tulis nukul cucocha tic, yanalu ok, y chilu ok, cumansic, cumansic, yanalu ok, y chilu ok, cumansic, cumansic, tialusetic, utialusisiltic. Y chuluta ya huatilob, y chuluta kiki macuyolob, y nunyaob, culubul, cucala, y chuluk anil, tusku oxa, unukul, ubasalob, inyum, inyum, utiala kansken, macabeta nushita, y chuluchehin ahkambal, tita kanech. Y dice así. Señor, Señor, no necesita ser adulto para enseñar. Oculto en la sutil sonrisa de mi alumno, estás tú. Si algo me aflige, si mi corazón recibe la visita de los abrojos, él, provisto de tu sabiduría, atrapa mis penas con el aleteo de sus preguntas y se las lleva al patio de los juegos y ahí, recluidas en el vientre de un viejo balón de pie en pie, de pase en pase, hecha trizas por el griterío y la ovación convulsa, mis penas sucumben aprisionadas en las redes de la portería. Señor, señor, no necesita ser adulto para enseñar. Oculto en la sutil sonrisa de mi hijo, estás tú. Y termino con esta, que esta me la sé de memoria. Dice así, un ajilapishan. Atane, un ajilapishan, tu mentí kushan al acelo. Tie uchben shan in la tushku casa la castalil, ti kupata la tan. Le bektike mawokol ukimil a winklil, mishawokol ukimil a pishan. A winklile mantas kupatal y chuyichapalal. A pishane mantas kulembal y chuyich shushil eko. La casa de tu alma. Tu idioma es la casa de tu alma. Allá viven tus padres y tus abuelos. En esa casa milenaria, hogar de tus recuerdos, permanece tu palabra. Por eso... No llores la muerte de tu cuerpo, ni llores la muerte de tu alma. Tu cuerpo permanece en el rostro de tus hijos. Tu alma eternece en el fulgor de las estrellas. Muchas gracias.
Muchísimas gracias, Maestro Cocompech. Ahora, para seguir con la siguiente muy distinguida, uh, la doctora Ofelia Cepeda is going to read of her post poetry, a true Renaissance woman who gave us an incredibly intellectual academic presentation in the morning and is going to read from her poetry for us. Uh, Dr. Cepeda um, is a Regents Professor of Linguistics and a recipient of the MacArthur Award. Uh, and she's at the University of Arizona. Please help me welcome Dr. Ofelia Cepeda. Earth Movement. Bo ag mushapima kajuk, shagwupum of piwahon and pikoitat kajuet, mutmosikat kajpiri hoinet, chonyanda. Shagwupum of piwahon and pikoitat kajam kachem. Matokaswa osim swuchka. Shagupo mo piwa ho na ni pikoy tat ka kawar. Matsuho ki mo ima. Shagupo mo piwa ho na ni pikoy hawa ki taksuwa o si jowat. Matakawara ba o at. Nya haka ka jopi sa iwa ho. Matkyoju. It's going to rain. Someone said it's going to rain. I think it is not so because I have not yet felt the earth and the way that it holds still in anticipation. I think it is not so because I have not yet felt the sky become heavy with the moisture of preparation. I think it is not so because I have not yet felt the winds move with their coolness. I think it is not so because I have not yet inhaled the sweet wet dirt the winds bring. So there is no truth that it will rain. <clears throat> Thank you. where clouds are formed. Nene hashaki. Haka chicken nene mom kai the kim kai the kim tashud nikawi. Am kai the kim si arik tagyo. Am kai the kin jupin tagyo. Am kai the kim wakorim tagyo. Am a chai to get shaki. Mom kai the kim. Tapta had a cock tea with it. Sapo walk to Chuck Todd. Sapo walk to Jewadica. Skurgage or Nyan again yaid. Sir Judge Big or Nyan and again yaid. Car at your car chum shoot at the meabet. Car at your good jiggles the meabet. Car at your skurg hoover the meabet. Car at your skurg and yin yay the meabet. In the midst of songs, we hear the songs resounding. They are resounding towards the sunset. They are resounding toward the sunrise. They are resounding toward the north. They are resounding toward the south. We are in the midst of songs. Our heart is full of joy. Our mind is good, our land is good. The land is all beautiful, take a look. There is a light rain all around us, take a look. We hear the ocean in the distance, it has come near us. We hear the beautiful wind in the distance, it has come near us. 
We hear the dust storm in the distance. It has come near us. We hear a beautiful song in the distance. It has come near us. We hear a beautiful song in the distance. It has come upon us. And then this uh, last poem is a very short poem, and it's a new piece. Uh, it comes out of a project that I've been working on this past year um, with a group of other artists. And we are focusing, on this project, we are focusing on the, on the border, the U.S.-Mexico border, but the piece that uh, goes through the autumn nation. And... Um, I have been writing about this topic for some time, so I added some new pieces. And this is a little short piece. And I started thinking about the people who've tried to come through that desert there on the Autumn Nation and did not survive. But I was not thinking about the people. I was thinking about the desert. Because as my friend and colleague and, and relative uh, Gabriela mentioned this morning that that is our name, Tohono O'odham, where the desert people, that's our home. Tohono means desert. And so it's, that uh, land is very important to us. So I think about the land and the way that it must be responding to the people that have disappeared out there or that have died out there and never found. So this piece is called not the intent of this desert. Each tiny blade of creosote leaf has a memory of the people that have come through. The sand absorbs the tears, nightmares, sorrows of the walkers. It muffles their cries. No one hears them. This was never the intent of this desert. Thank you. Uh, next. We have a hip hop artist, Jesus Cristobal Pachabl, Aka, Pad Boy. And he's from the community of Jose Maria Pino Suarez in the municipality of Felipe Carrillo Puerto, Quintana Roo, Mexico. In 2009, he started his career as a soloist and promoted the first Maya rap in the Yucatec Maya language. Choosing, it's coming, it's coming. Choosing <laughs> the name of Pat Boy, Pat, meaning giving something or creating something new like that. A word in the language of his Mayan ancestors who were Maya social rebels. He focuses his work on strengthening the Maya language, and with his songs, he spreads the language beyond borders. He also mentors many upcoming rappers, all for the promotion of the Maya language and culture, and what we could say in the frontera, borderoleando al amor in his work, okay? So here he is. Hola. Malo. Bien. Key making wall. Estoy contento. Eh, soy Pat Boy. Pat significa darle algo, una forma patik de maya. Y boy, pues todos lo saben, chico, ¿no? Entonces les voy a interpretar tres temas. El primer tema se habla Koneshkai, que significa vamos a cantar. Es una canción muy movida que habla sobre 
la gente, cómo disfruta las fiestas en el pueblo, cómo disfrutan cuando ellos hacen el, la, ¿cómo se llama? Cuando hay maíz en el pueblo, cómo lo disfrutan cuando hay todo ese cultivo bueno y, y seguir cantando, esa es la canción esta. Y lo podemos enseñar rapidito para que la podamos cantar todos juntos, si es posible. Dice así, lo voy a decir muy lento para que lo puedan captar, ¿sale? Dice, Konech, Ay, Tum, Konech, Ay, Tum. Ahí te, ya lo tienen, ¿listo? Significa, vamos a cantar. Y lo vamos a comenzar así, despacito, luego va aumentando, va aumentando, todo. ¿Les parece? Sí. ¿Todos ya comieron ahí? No se vayan a atragantar porque luego… Ok, dice así entonces. Hum, ka, osh. ¿Qué, ¿Qué pasó? ¿Se les olvidó? Ok, ok, dice. Hum, ka, osh. Kones kai tum. Kones kai tum. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Ahí está, ya la tienen. Kones kai tum. Bueno, play a, la, a la, la canción entonces y dice así. Bello, con Sky, tu lacales, todos vamos a cantar, dice. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar, con Sky, tú, con Sky, tú. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar, con Sky, tú, con Sky, tú. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Con Sky Tun, con Sky Tun. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Cuchupe limpe la, cuchupe luz tan mal, lice cabe la, macha exultal, ya ni esta que hasta el tush que es que mil, cucho con la cuchital, más pastic tiza mal, metes le vas cuchalic, la puxical, chicos bill, sham, la malo, mi ha sido más igual, mi com, y que me ya con tom, manes feliz, si el tito de que ni la, te espalgo y Maya Chakulubul, la bol, con el anis, de Tile Maya Tam, titula Kalesh, de Terki Macol. Como dice entonces, a ver esos aplausos. Ahí va. Hum, ka, os. Con el Sky Tum, con el Sky Tum. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Con el Sky Tum, con el Sky Tum. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Cuchu que ni blaque, cuchu balatam. Lista capcana, algo usa, uy que pasa. Cuchanes, y te el kimak ol. Inta si titula cal. De ti le bobochi, mayak hay. Cuchanes, wey ya no ne. Bello, bello, y te el kimak ol. Si hay que allá, titula cales. A ver, a ver, quiero ese grito muy fuerte, ese ánimo, a ver, ese grito. Estamos presentes, a ver, más fuerte. Vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Con Sky Tum, con Sky Tum, vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Con Sky Tum, con Sky Tum, vamos a cantar, vamos a cantar. Bello, bello, vamos a cantar en Maya, en español también, en, en Mije, en Tocil, en Michol, también todos los de aquí. Podemos cantar, rapear, hacer teatro, de todo se puede, mientras lo disfrutemos. Así con el Puxical, como se dice. Jumbo Tic. Eso, eso fue la canción este, en College Sky Tum. Vamos a cantar. ¿Sí la aprendieron? ¿Qué significa? A ver, que lo repitan. 
Ichimaya. Quiero que se aprendan una, una frase así que se dice así, Pash, que significa música. Me imagino que todos escuchan música, ¿no? Entonces, cuando estén escuchando música, que recuerden que se dice Pash en Maya. Pash. P, una A, y una A, y una X. Pash. Sí, voy a poner Pash para escuchar. Así. Pash. Esta siguiente canción se llama Vidas Mayas, es una canción que escribí en el 2009, que fue de los primeros en rap, rap en maya que escribí en mi pueblo, eh, donde yo soy originario, es una comunidad muy pequeña que tiene creo que 80 casas, aquí está nuestro, mi vecino que se llama Norberto, también es, allá, es, es de mi comunidad y hay como unas 150 personas y al hacer rap maya la gente se sorprendió porque ahí el rap maya, el rap es muy mal visto porque insulta, habla de otras cosas, pero todo eso, no ya al hacer rap maya y contarles historias del pueblo o vivencias, entonces la gente comenzó a aceptarlo bien, aunque es, todavía se ve un poco raro que, que escuchen rap los abuelos ahí, pero hay abuelas que escuchan rap, me dice, me gusta mucho tu canción, porque hay una canción que tengo que se llama Un día sin ti, significa Humpek in Minanestin original. Es una canción romántica donde habla de que un día no, es, no, está, no estás con esa persona. Entonces la abuelita le, le gustó mucho las palabras que decía de que extraña, de que quiere ver a esa persona. ¿no? Y eso me motiva mucho para seguir haciendo rap en maya. Igual me hizo conocer más de, de, de lo que son los mayas. Esta canción se llama Vidas Mayas y dice así. Yeah. Sí, esto es Cuscal Mayao, Vidas Mayas, Bello. este es el sureste mexicano, uh. ya tú sabes. Ye, yeah, yeah. papá Shka significa yeah. aplauso. Yeah. Ya. Se colombe ya, de ti en Maya Boko, tal lo tengo en la quinta, no caje el México, te chico ves con cacho, me la que traiga ya, me tenés sin la león, que que chico allá te, uchi se colombe ya, de ti en Maya Boko, tal lo tengo en la quinta, no caje el México, te chico ves con cacho, me la que traiga ya, me tenés sin la león, que que chico allá te. Mucha pa es con es que tu lactilesh, le pasa más tu gele, si tenés, no cucho winik, y este pala winik, que me cucho lo coca, ah no que wik, que su pavieta el ulex si lo con lo que va a los chicos para el bachach con metico le cumane que no se va a estar que el jack hasta va a volar cacho con metico pecho en pelusa hasta cucho la mochuja con bubino pichcol le más que vete el bat macho tu bote vinco me casle ti abono con lile me chajo ti le colmaco vas a besico le te obesi ginal che valianti obu que que maya con casico me que en hacer el tío tu lo que va a lo menos tiro de casa y te lo circo me ya con mucha como que hasta si se colombe ya, de ti en maya boca, tal lo tengo en la quinta, no caje en México, te chico ves con cacho, ve la que traiga ya, me tenés sin a lo que que el chico valiente, o si se colombe ya, de ti en maya boca, tal lo tengo en la quinta, no caje en México, te chico ves con cacho, ve la que traiga ya, me tenés sin a lo que que el chico valiente. Mucha paz con el que hay tu lactilesh, le pasa más tu gele, si te nenes, no cucho winik, y este pala winik, que me cucho lob, jocano que wik, Uchan que suba, que te lo lexilo, con lo que los chicos van a chachar con metico, le cumanic y no, la mate con la cacha, va a la cacha con metico, beche, pelusa, hasta, cuchilla, muchucho, como vino, pichico, le más que abierta el bat, macho, tu bote, vinco, me hachle, ti, abono, con lile, me chajo, ti le colmaco, más a besico, le dio besigenal, chivalianti, abu que cama ya con tacico, me chupique en el selectivo, tu lum, cacbalo, me no tiro de casa, y de los circos me yaco, mucha cabuca, hasta, si se colombe ya, de ti en maya boca, un talón de no la quinta, no caje en México, de chico es tu cacho, ve la que traiga ya, me tenés sin a lo que que el chico al diante, un chico se colombe ya, de ti en maya boca, un talón de no la quinta, no caje en México, de chico es tu cacho, ve la que traiga ya, me tenés sin a lo que que el chico al diante, ja, ve yo, se colombe ya, de ti en maya boca, se colombe ya, de ti en maya boca, Utalop de Nola King, desde el sureste Maya. ¡Woo! ¡Hey, hey! Aquí tenemos nuestro músico en vivo. ¡Hey! 
Esta es la canción Vidas Mayas o Custal Mayao. Yeah. <risa> ahí estuve gran músico ahí. <risa> Igual les invito a que nos puedan seguir en el Facebook o YouTube, en el Spotify, ya pueden escuchar Rap Maya. Ya llegaron los mayas en las plataformas digitales. <risa> Como hay clases en WhatsApp, en Maya también, pues ya no hay este pretexto que digas, ay, no te puedo comprar tu disco. Me puedes buscar en el spot o en el Facebook, compartir nuestro video. Es algo que, bueno, no te va a costar mucho, porque mayormente muchos pasan en el Facebook mucho rato. Entonces, pues lo puedes compartir y así otra gente puede escuchar nuestro proyecto. Tal vez nos inviten para participar en otros eventos, como aquí también, que estoy muy contento de venir a visitarlos. Y Hachikimakiwol. Y con esta canción me despido, se llama Utstawich, que significa que te, que, que te gusta. Pero quiero que se paren todos entonces para que se sientan, porque comencemos a bajar la comida, ¿vale? Tulakales, Kawatales, todos así arriba. Parados ahí, parados. Vamos a estirarnos ahorita con esta canción. Es un estilo soca, es, una, es un, un sonido que se escucha mucho en el Caribe. Se han ido por Cancún, Chetumal. Eh, la música caribeña está fusionada con, con soca. Es así como que es para que te, tú muevas la cadera. Y entonces la canción habla sobre te gusta. Llegó la canción que te va a gustar y te vas a mover y vas a disfrutar. Y siempre el mayatán para mí es algo... Eh, movido, ¿no? Siempre estamos contentos platicando, hablando, lo que sea. Siempre es motivador, ¿no? Y dice así. ¡Ja! ¡Ve, ve yo! ¡Ve yo! ¡Con el shocot! ¡Vamos a bailar! Yeah. ¿Se le puede subir un poquito de volumen ahí? ¡Sí, sí! ¡Dice! Canal, canal, fixes, avo, get the shanat, fish up, get the team, all I can do, Jim, like it up, point the a cup, the chunk, we get basha, fish, kuchu, bata, chankaka, no kochka, tanu, Jim, like it up, tana, we get basha, ma, son some mal, kena, bule, basha, como dice, todos, tu la calesh, papa scap, papa scap, papa scap, tu la calesh, papa scap, papa scap, Bello, ja, ja, tenés que brincar, si no, ja, ja, bello. Chimpotes, chimpotes, tactus camella, chimpotes, chimpotes, tactus camella, chimpotes, os, pexa baix, pexa baix, chimpotes, chimpotes, tactus camella, chimpotes, chimpotes, tactus camella, chumpia, os, pexa baix, pexa baix, chimpotes, chimpotes, tactus camella, chimpotes, chimpotes, tactus camella, chumpia, os, pexa baix, pexa baix, ja, bello. Tú la cales, acá ves canal, todos con las manos arriba. Ja, ja, yo. Pexa va, pexa boc, pexa pucical, pexa boc, pexa cap, pexa boc, pecho, pecho. Todos se muevan sus pies, es oc, cap es mano. Pecho, pexa es canal, canal. Pecho, tú no, tú la cales, papas cap, papas cap. Ja, ja, tú la cales, papas cap. Bello, Kima Colal, Título Calés, Pone Socot, Chimpotes, Chimpotes, Tactus Camella, Chimpotes, Chimpotes, Tactus Camella, Chimpotes, Chimpotes, Tactus Camella, Cupcasmos, Pexabais, Pexabais, Chimpotes, Chimpotes, Tactus Camella, Chimpotes, Chimpotes, Tactus Camella, Chimpotes, 
Fodei, te fodei, tá que os camelos já com que as fotos Pra que sabais, pra que sabais Pedió Este es ADN Maya, Fat Boy Kima Gola Ha Muchas gracias Nos dejamos con Fumil Mots Excelente, aplausos Fabuloso Qué excelencia Igual si quieren apoyarnos traemos CDs, traemos playeras y gorras aquí en la puertecita. Gracias. Ándale. No se les vaya a olvidar. Ok, thank you so much, Pat Boy. Thank you for bringing such wonderful energy to the room. Our next uh, and last performance is by uh, a group called Jumil Moots. Are you uh, folks, um, you ready? Ok. Ok. Come on up. Um, Jumil Moots, um, I'm going to ask Yasmin to introduce them because y Yasmin Novello, who you all met earlier as one of our panelists, uh, ma La Maestra, as you, as you remember, as you may remember, um, is a assistant professor on the Facultad de Ciencias Antropológicas, uh, is an anthropologist at the Universidad Autónoma de Yucatán, and is also uh, a, a woman of many talents. Um, part of the band Jumil Moots and did that video, that beautiful video uh, with Pat Boy that was playing and that we've been sending out by email. It's just such a fabulous, beautiful um, video. Uh, anyone can fall in love with rap and hip hop with that kind of a video. So, Yasmin, would you please introduce your group? Uh, buenas tardes, Vishavelesh. Oh <laughs> Hi, Chimalo. Very good, uh, muy bien, Hachmalo. Vishabeles. Bueno, nosotros somos el grupo Humil Mots. Eh, no es eh, o o de inglés, es o o maya. Es Humil Mots. Eh, significa sonido de raíz. Y pues llevamos hace aproximadamente más de un año tocando juntos. Eh, esta es nuestra versión acústica. Si quieren vernos en nuestra versión completa. Eh, tocamos una fusión de punk, reggae, rock eh, con nuestras canciones en lengua maya mañana estaremos a las 6 de la tarde aproximadamente en el Global Justice Center así que esperamos verles por ahí 7, 7 de la noche bueno, si quieren llegar antes para ocupar sus lugares porque se pueden vender todos los boletos y separen su cupo <risa> Bueno, esta canción es del señor Daniel Maipat, maestro Daniel Maipat, es un himno para todos nosotros y es, eh, significa este camino que vamos haciendo todos los días con nuestra lengua, con nuestra cultura, siempre sabiendo que vamos hacia adelante y nunca para atrás.
Tanutal Kustal significa viene la vida. Tanutal Kustal viene la vida. Esta canción dice que en, en pequeños pueblos o en grandes ciudades estamos ahí dando nuestro trabajo, construyendo nuestra vida. Y la vida viene y porque ya viene la lluvia. Tu mentalutal chaque, dice, porque viene la lluvia. Y esa lluvia es, está representada por todas las acciones que hacemos para seguir fortaleciendo nuestra lengua, nuestra cultura y nuestras relaciones de respeto a la vida digna de todos. Some more, you 
Queremos despedirnos con esta canción eh, que ustedes nos van a ayudar a cantar. Dirán, uy, ¿cómo? Si no sabemos más, ya van a ver que es muy fácil. Se llama Cushanon, estamos vivos.
Pestan y estigna gil, pestan y estigna humil. Nati que aquí moto che, tin si caja tal guaye, tin tu clasta de suelo junto al batil. Saco maru a bobe, tapisha y sacil. Entonces voy a cantar la primera parte y ustedes la repiten. Ile, ile, kusha hanon, ile, ustedes. Kusha hanon, kusha hanon, ile. Otra vez. También queremos decirles que también trajimos playeras <ríe> por si gustan apoyar a la causa y estaremos por la puerta. Gracias. Excelente. Muchas cosas para comprar. Gracias. Well, I told you we are an embarrassment of riches and wealth today, right? I mean, we've got so much amazing talent uh, here. It's just incredible. Um, Moving along to our keynote address for the afternoon, and uh, I have to say I was sort of backstage consulting with Luis Valdez about giving me tips because I learned from him and his wife that what I really do, I thought I was faculty, but I'm really a stage manager. <laughs> and I said, uh, can you give me some tips because we're an hour behind time. <laughs> but believe it or not, we'll get, we're actually going to catch up. We will catch up. And uh, so watch the magic of stage management, okay? We are incredibly honored uh, again today to be able to have uh, Luis Valdez with us. He is regard, yes, bravo. <laughs> Un héroe indígena de nuestra, nuestro pueblo y nuestra comunidad chicana. He is regarded as one of the most and influential American playwrights living today. In 1965, as many of you know, he founded the internationally renowned and OB award-winning theater company, El Teatro Campesino, the farm, yes, the Farm Workers Theater. And formed it in the heat of the United Farm Workers struggle and the Great Delano grape strike in California's Central Valley. His early actos, encourage campesinos to leave the fields and join the UFW. His mitos gave Chicanos their own contemporary mythology. Yeah. And 
I am going to direct you to your packets and the bio sheet that has more lengthy information about all of our presenters today, especially about Luis Valdez for more information and to Google, of course, because I don't want to delay any more time in listening and hearing from nuestro héroe, Luis Valdez. Gracias a todos. Es mi honor y placer estar aquí con todos los compañeros mayas, compañeros y compañeras. Qué bonita voz, qué bonito sonido oír el maya yucateco hablado y también conducido a través del, del rap. <laughs> Esa es una evolución tremenda. It is a pleasure and an honor for me to be here to listen to this bilingualism. I didn't expect the, the Maya to Spanish, but there it is. Bilingualism is a beautiful thing. The mind and the human brain benefits from bilingualism. I hope you know that. That the code switching that takes place in the human mind allows uh, the synapses of the brain to go from left to right and right to left. And if you're speaking half a sentence in Spanish, la otra parte en español, you see how quickly that goes. But it's the same thing in Maya and Espanol and, and what have you. Any language, any language. The human brain is an amazing, God-created instrument that we have only begun to appreciate. The name of this talk is Up From the Roots, Arriba de las Raíces. And uh, coincidentally, these are my roots. Uh, I am of Yaqui descent. Uh, given an Italian or a Frenchman or two, can en la familia. <laughs> but the fact is that mostly Yaqui and from the great Sonoran Desert, the, this marvelous piece of the earth, that the Hono Atam also are, of course, this is the homeland of so many indigenous tribes. About uh, 20 years ago, my wife and I, Lupe, had uh, an opportunity to collaborate with our colegas at the University of Sonora. I was sent out by the San Diego Repertory Theater to research a new play that I was writing back in 1999 called Mummified Deer, una nueva obra que se llamaba El Venado Momificado. And it was really about um, the Yaqui genocide that occurred in Mexico uh, at the turn of the century under the dictatorship of Porfirio Diaz, durante el Porfiriato. They were killing our people uh, in Sonora. And, uh, I never understood why my family crossed to, into Arizona, I came to Tucson, but that was one of the reasons. Over a hundred years ago, they, they were right close to the border. My grandmother, one grandmother was born in Caborca, the other one in Guaymas, an abuelo in Udes, another in Altar, so you can tell if you know the area, it's very close. And uh, my relatives had been coming and going across the so-called border for generations. Uh, back into the 19th century, they were vaqueros, they were mineros, and there was no border. There was no border. My dad was born in Nogales six days after Arizona became a state in 1912. And so Arizona has always been my ancestral homeland in so many ways. Aquí están mis raíces. This play was called Mummified Deer. It's available, by the way, at the sand over here if you're interested. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a bit uh, controversial uh, because it reveals uh, the genocide that occurred in Mexico. My, see, my people weren't even Mexicans. In order to become Mexicans, we had to cross into the United States. <laughs> Over here, we weren't Yaquis anymore. We were Mexicanos, Mexicans. So, ah, what a relief, you know. <laughs> but we didn't realize that there were other problems. Uh, and speaking of roots, let me go back a little bit to give you, just tell you a little story about one of my little Louis stories. I always like to start with a story because it kind of puts things into perspective and uh, the narrative tradition is, is very important. About 70 years ago, I was in the third grade uh, in the Delano area, a little town called Early Mart, and I had a, a wonderful, uh, I, I think recently educa graduated teacher. She was young, she was blonde, she was beautiful. And uh, she was about 25, you know, something like that, early 20s. She was a fine teacher. 
uh, and she was sweet on the sixth grade teacher who had the shop. You know, he used to teach shop to all the sixth grade boys, and they used to make stuff. So one day she comes into our classroom, and she's got this wooden yellow truck, a little steak truck like that, made completely out of wood by the sixth graders. And it was painted yellow, and, and it had the stakes and the bl black tires. If you were a kid in World War II, we always used to have wooden toys. So I was amazed. You know, I said, man, I want this truck. And she, she said, we're going to award this truck to the best behaved boy. The girls were out of the competition, sorry. <laughs> the best behaved boy in class at the end of a month. And so I thought, man, that, that's mine, that truck. I've, I got it, man. See, I was a good student. I loved school. Me gustaba mucho la escuela. Buen alumno, buen estudiante. Me gustaba aprender. I used to love to study and read and do numbers, all of that. I loved school. And so I figured I had a chance. I was one of her best students, you know. But I knew, like everybody else in class, that she had um, a teacher's pet. And let's call him Jimmy. I forget his name. But anyway, uh, Jimmy was obviously her pet. And so uh, I thought it was my competition. I said, I've got to watch Jimmy, you know, this guy. And so uh, during that month, uh, early on, I noticed that uh, Jimmy was handing out papers like a class monitor. And so I got an idea. So I went to the teacher and I said, uh, teacher, I noticed Jimmy's been handing out papers. He's a class monitor. I'd like to be a class monitor. Can I be a class monitor tomorrow? And she got very serious. This was right after the class. And she says, sit down, Louis. They should call me Louis. And she says, uh, you know, um, well, Jimmy is uh, the son of a grower, you know. His father's a rancher. He's got a lot of property, and he's got a lot of people working for him. And uh, you are the son of a farm worker. And your father either works for Jimmy's father or will work for his father. And uh, when Jimmy grows up, he's going to inherit his daddy's ranch, and he's going to be a grower. He's going to be a rancher. And when you grow up, you're going to be a farm worker, and you're going to probably work for Jimmy. So it's better that he be the monitor. And so I thought to myself, well, that's a lot of bullshit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or I bilingually, pura caca de toro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't want to jinx my chances, so I didn't quit. I said, okay, teacher, fine, I'll figure out some way. Well, a couple of days later, Jimmy's horsing around in class, and he's standing up on one of the desks as the teacher comes in, and she says, Jimmy, get down. And I thought to myself, Yachinge, I'm in, man, you know? <laughs> well, at the end of the month came the big announcement. She brought out the truck. You know, we were all drooling, all the little boys drooling over this truck, and she says, okay, and we have a winner, and the truck goes to Jimmy. Me lleva la que me trajo. <laughs> you know, and so I was mad. I was furious. As mad as an eight-year-old can be. I mean, I was, I was enraged, you know, so much that I ran out of the classroom, out of the school. It was after school now. So I ran, and I ran thinking, what am I going to do, you know? It was this anger. And I passed my grandpa, and he had a little shop in the back. He was a carpenter, you know. In those days, you had to do everything. And so um, I thought, wow, well, he's got a shop. And so I stopped by, and I went, and I saw my abuelito. He abuelito, me presta sus herramientas, quiero hacer algo, you know, she said, no, pues sí, pero limpia después de que acabe, sí, sí, como no, como sí, and so I went to work, you know, and I went in there, and uh, I remember that little wooden truck, and so I saw my, my grandfather's stash of lumber, un barrote, you know, a two by four, I got the two by four, I got the saw down, I got the pieces, you know, and I began to work right there, man, with eight-year-old urgency, you know what I'm saying, and so I began sawing, martillando, you know, and, and I cut the right lengths, and then I said, what am I going to do for bottle, bottle tops? Coca-Cola bottle tops became the headlights. I got mayonnaise jar tops for the wheels, you know. And I began to put this thing together, you know. And little by little, it began to take shape. I said, wow, this is a, it began to look like this is great. And I, the more I worked, the happier I got, the faster I went. And then it came time to paint. I said, well, yellow, because it was a yellow truck. I couldn't find any yellow. Pink, pues ni modo, vámonos, you know. <laughs> And so I painted it with pink and, and black and white highlights. And, and pretty soon I'm standing there and I'm looking at, wow. And, and my grandfather came in and said, ah, hijo, este troque, tú lo hiciste? I said, yeah, I made it. Hijo, mijito, pues está bien, está bien. Man, I was so happy. 
Now, it was rasquachi, okay? It was a little beat up, you know what I'm saying? But I took it home, and I showed my dad and my mom, and they were amazed. They said, you did this by yourself? I said, yeah, I did it. Look at my truck, you know? And then after that, I began to do airplanes and boats. I mean, nothing. It couldn't stop me. You know, I, I used to get bamboo and make out. It was amazing. My mother used to hang my little airplanes from the ceiling, okay? And then my cousins would come. Mira, Louis, tiene un, 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 un quadrant with the airplanes. Mira, acá está. You got an Air Force, you know? In any case... There's a lesson in all of this that I learned that's very precious to me. Uh, the more things change, the less they change. There are too many teachers like that beautiful teacher that are still making that mistake with their students, you know. But the object lesson for me, and here's the moral of the story, when in doubt, build your own damn truck. Okay? And so that is a lesson that I've carried for more than 70 years now. I've been building my own truck. And I fell in love with the theater, you know, a couple of years before that. And, and uh, eventually I went to Cesar Chavez and pitched him the idea of a theater up by and for farm workers, working with campesinos, you know. But, you know, campesino in the big sense. I love the Mayan poetry that we heard this evening because it really refers to our relationship to nature, our relationship to the earth, a los pájaros, to the uh, birds in the trees, to the wind, to the weather, and in these times of severe climate change, we need Mayan consciousness that attaches us to nature and shows us who we are. You know, I'm a theater person. I, I, I've been a movie maker. I've built sets. You know, I've been in, on movie sets and all that stuff. But the thing is that uh, that's an artificial. I, I'm not deceived. It's not reality. It's a set. But you know, our cities are sets. Our buildings are sets. Nature is reality, and we need to root ourselves in nature and not defy it. And uh, I don't know what we would do without air conditioning <laughs> these days in the great Sonoran Desert, but too many people come from elsewhere, the snowbirds that come here, and have no respect for the native people that lived here without air conditioning. That's a severe mistake. But we can transcend that. We can transcend that. Because the roots that I speak of are fairly deep. I went to uh, Sonora to study my Yaqui roots, and I discovered with a shock. It was I'd already been doing theater for more than 40 years. But I saw the Easter Yaqui ceremony, and I realized that my grandfather, whom I never knew, he died when he was 38 of double pneumonia. He was a copper miner. And then when he started to get sick, he went to work in the fields, and he died in Mesa, Arizona. He's buried in Mesa. But he called my father to the, his deathbed and said, Mijo, tú eres el hombre ahora. He told my dad, you're the man of the family. You have to support the family. So my dad went to the fifth grade and never went back to school. But he was self-taught. He was a historian, self-made, used to love history books. But anyway, the, the fact is that my history... Uh, is, is deeply embedded in, in this area. And so I needed to be able to investigate that in another way. And I found that through contact with the, the Maestro Domingo Martinez Paredes, the Mayan master that I met back in 1972, when El Teatro Campesino went to Mexico City for the first time, and we performed in Chapultepec Park, La Casa del Lago. And uh, it was an amazing audience. And I'm looking out there at, at the audience. And, and I saw a face that I recognized. I said, could it be him? And after the show, um, David Alfaro Siqueiros came up. <laughs> and, and he said how much he, he loved the Teatro Campesino. You know, he came up to me and he said, usted es un maestro. And I said, no maestro, usted es el maestro, you know. Uh, but I know what he meant. Of course, you can be a waiter in Mexico and be a maestro, you know. It doesn't matter. But the fact is, I think he understood. So maestria in our culture is to sense your responsibility to your people and to your community and to be able to share that. And that's what the teatro has been for me. It has been a sharing of my roots. And those roots, again, on that trip in 1972, I discovered are best described in Mayan terms. And the biggest root for us is uniquely. That's the description of the human being. I learned that from El Maestro Domingo Martinez Paredes and his great books, 
un continente y una cultura, el, maya, el, el idioma maya hablado, escrito, junabku, uh, síntesis. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a world philosophy that the world has yet to reappraise and appreciate. But I'm hoping now that in the 21st century, the Mayan time has come again, now in the sixth sun, el sexto sol. But Maestro Paredes, through the genius of Mayan culture, described us as who we are, uniquely. All of us are uniquely, which means vibrant being, or more specifically, vibrant root of the universe. We vibrate. We vibrate in ourselves. We vibrate. The heat that we feel comes from our vibration. When we stop vibrating, we die, we go cold. But that vibration is the vibration of the universe. To be universal is to attach yourself to the planets and the stars and the constellations and to know the cycles of nature because you are part of the cycles of nature. This is your natural truth, your Mayan truth. And if you ignore this, if you violate this, you will essentially destroy yourself. And so, uniquely is an important, a vital concept for the whole world, not just for the Mayan community. We're talking about transcendence here. That whole business that I experienced in the third grade, the racism, that, that, that's still going on. That's still going on. Quite frankly, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for anybody to tell me that I'm inferior. I don't have time for anybody to tell me that I have nothing to give. I come to the communal table of the world, bringing me herencia, bringing my herit heritage, bringing my legacy, and I give this to the world. <laughs> through the work as defined by my ancestry. And again, when I saw the Easter ceremony, I saw my grandfather I never met him. I say he must have been a Pascola, if not a Mayan, if not a deer dancer, because I never knew that, and my dad didn't know that because he was just a kid. And anyway, he was born in Nogales. He was born in our, he was here in Arizona. He never knew my abuelo back in Sonora. But I, I mean, something so deep in me tells me that's my root. And so when I saw the Yaki Easter ceremony, I saw centuries. And so uh, uh, that's the herencia that I'm trying to bring forward. But beyond that, you know, it's not just a matter of music and dance. It's also science. It's also an appreciation. I was a math and physics major, straight A. I mention that because I don't look like a math and physics major. <laughs> unless you're looking for Mayans. Unless you're looking for the architects that built the pyramids. The biggest pyramid on earth is in Cholula. Hernán Cortés thought it was a mountain, so he built a church on top of it. But it's a, it's a pyramid built over centuries. Cholula was like the Vatican for the Aztecs. This is what they taught their philosophy. And beyond that, you've got countless of cities in the Maya land that are even older and more ancient. You go to San Juan Teotihuacan and you say, what a mystery, what is this? What kind of instrumentation did they have in order to make this happen? Well, I have, again, curiously heard rumors, among other maestros, that our ancient ancestors had flutes that they could play at a certain pitch, and it would make stone light, so that you could move great stones through the power of vibration, the power of vibration of a flute. That's taking music to another level, you know. And we keep looking for it, we keep looking for it, but there are investigations there. So we're talking about transcendence, and this is what I think that new artists have to do in order to tap into the roots of America, which are the Mayan roots, which are the Incan roots, which are the Toltec, Olmec roots. This is the ancient truth of America. This is who we are. We suffered, we as a continental people, suffered a holocaust 500 years ago. 90% of our people died due to smallpox and other diseases brought by the Spanish. We were unprotected. The lesson there is don't isolate yourself. We were isolated because of the oceans, so we were immune, we're not immune to the vast diseases that had swept the earth. So we were pure on a certain level, but also very weak and vulnerable, and that's what happened. We were overtaken. 
Today we have a president that's trying to build walls. What the hell is that? He's trying to weaken the United States. I hesitate to say America because America is a continent to me. And the root, again, is somewhere in the Yucatan and in Central America. You know, this, the oldest extant play in the Americas is a play called El Rabinal Achi. The town of Rabinal still exists. It's in Guatemala, up in the highlands. In order to get away, I mean, the people concentrate up there and they get away from the killing fields down below. Uh, the Amaya are still being slaughtered all over Central America because they're not seen as human beings as much less uniquely. They're seen as beasts of burden. They're seen as farm workers. They're seen as, well, you, you do the dirty work and you'll be okay. And, and that, that is in a, that's terrible. Well, for me, you know, I've been underestimated so much in my life. I've been underestimated so much that doors have opened because I've been underestimated. I can crawl under the door, I've been so much under underestimated. I can go in through the keyhole, I have been so underestimated. You know, and a lot of people uh, say, how do I get into Hollywood, man? I want to break into Hollywood. And everybody's at the front door trying to get me in, let me in, let me be a star, let me be. And I say, go through the back door. <laughs> You know, get in there on the side, you know. Find a crack in the wall and get in, you know. Because you can get in. If you really want to get in, you can get in, you know. But don't be expected, don't expect to be respected. You've got to make that respect. As a director in Hollywood, I am a woman, okay. I am treated like a woman director. I'm kind of proud of that. But at the same time, I understand the struggle of women in this world. It wasn't until I was 40 years old that I realized that I wasn't just a man, I was a woman too. Now a lot of that I owe to my compañera of 50 years, Lupe Trujillo Valdez. Lupe, take a bow here. This is my compañera. We have, we have three sons. We have three sons, they're all artists, you know, and, and, and our youngest one actually is, is working now with, he's staging a new piece that, that he's doing with uh, his collaborators. He went all the way to El Rabinal in Guatemala to do, to reproduce the oldest play in the Americas, El Rabinal Achi, The Warrior of Rabinal. And it's a wonderful piece. I've read the script, he read it to us. It's amazing to me, it, it, as a father, I couldn't be prouder. But I also see that he's part of the root. He's part of the flowering. You know, the Mayas used to have a, a, an interesting concept that if you wanna send a message, tell a tree. They would say, tell a tree. And that sounded silly. People long ago would say, well, that's a ridiculous notion. <laughs> that's an idiotic thing. Except that now if you study trees and botany, if you know anything about living organisms, then you know that the roots of the tree extend all the way into the ground and they are helped now by a fungus that creates a communal communication system for trees, trees sometimes are 60 square miles in length underneath the ground. And so that's not such a far fetch. How did the Mayas know that? I have no idea. But they understood nature. They were working in conjunction and in coordination with nature. You know, I was a math major, like I say, and a physics major. I, I got out because I realized how racist technology could be. The world, I have an older brother, God bless him, he passed away a couple of years ago. But he, he, he told me, he became an engineer, and he said, you know, there are racist motherfuckers up here. And, and I said, well, I, don't, I, see, I can see that. And I said, I, I want to work at a more basic level. So I went into the arts. I decided that I was going to write plays and perform stories and make movies if I could. And this was going to be the way that I would enter into the world. But you know, that, that whole idea of, of communicating uh, 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 through the tree is, is what it's all about, you know. It's the tree, you build the tree. And as, as a physicist, I understood that there, the concept of vibration is inherent in the natural order, that it's very scientific. There's this big dialogue among physicists between the basic unit of matter being either a particle or a wave. And if you go from particle to wave, to particle to wave, to particle to wave, what you've got is vibration. So our Mayan ancestors were scientists of the first order. 
And it is an ab abomination that we don't respect our Mayans today for what they are. They are not beasts of burden. And as a Yaqui, I refuse to be a beast of burden in California or anywhere. I said, I am an artist. I am a writer. I'm a nuclear physicist. And I share that with you, all of you that are striving to be something other than what you are. Become yourself. Turn any negative in your life into a positive. You know, the, the racism, the lack of cultural expression when I was a kid opened up the world for me. They said, these people know nothing about my heritage, so I'm going to tap into it. The pachucos were despised. But I said, I want to do this story about the pachucos because I knew the pachucos. The pachucos were in my family. And so I wrote Zoot Suit. And lo and behold, we tapped in. We tapped into uh, an amazing, what, what people don't know is that El Pachuco, played by Eddie Olmos, is an incarnation of Tezcatlipoca, okay, who's one of the two, Maya, the, the two gemelos, the two magic twins. Uh, in, in the Maya world, it's Unacpu and Ishbalamke, but in the Aztec world, it's Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca. Well, the colors are red and black, La Tinta Negri Roja. The suit that Eddie Ormos wore is at Pachuco are the colors of Tezcatlipoca. So I'm, I was already tapping into Mayan philosophy. A couple people didn't see it as that. They said, what are you reading about the Pachucos in the 40s? It's not just that. It's deeper than that. La Bamba. La Bamba has Richie and Bob. That's Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca again. It's the story of two brothers. People say, well, it's Cain and Abel. Yes, it is. Sure. It can be Cain and Abel in the Bible, but it's also Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca. It's also Unapu and Ishbalamke. So you got to look at my work and see the roots. You got to see it deeper. And, and uh, if you're interested in the Yaqui uh, genocide, again, the name of the play is Mummified Deer, and it's on sale at the bookstore over here, you know, next door. But the thing is that these are stories that need to be told and retold. And my youngest son, as I say, is now working on the recreation of El Ravinal Achi in collaboration with Mayan masters from Ravinal in Guatemala. So that link and this link is the future. This is where we're going. Mayans are continental Americans. They are not foreigners. They are not animals or beasts of burden. They are the wisdom of our forefathers that must be preserved and brought forward. And as we go up the tree, as we go up the tree and understand where we go, then we come into the modern world, the 21st century. Do you know that the word tele, tele like in telegraph, like in television, like in tele, telecommunications, tele, we've been told, is the, Greek, the root, Greek root for distance. It means distance in Greek, which is quite acceptable. That's fine. I accept that. I'm a Greek too. But the thing is that it's also Maya Yucateco. Te is tree, le is leaf. So as a tree falls from the leaf, is caught to the wind, and transported across a distance, that is the definition of distance. It's te le broken down even further, even into a finer definition in Maya Yucateco. So you see, let's open our eyes, America and to understand what the roots of America are. And if brown people are trying to come here, don't be frightened. This is the soul, you know? This, uh, th this is what we're bringing. We're bringing the richness of the ancient cultures here. This is not just the most diverse place for language. Mexico is not, the most, not only the most diverse place for languages. It's also the most diverse naturally, the most fruits, the most vegetables in the world. We have fed the world out of Mexico since the Spanish arrived. We saved starving masses in China through the, the, the introduction of the sweet potato and, and so forth. I mean, I, I could go into it, but uh, I'm sure most of you have already studied it on some level. I hope you have. I have not putting down any other culture. I love Asia. My plays, if anything, now are about cultural fusion and cross-cultural communication. My play, most recent play, Running in San Jose Tonight, is about Maximilian and Carlotta. 
the Empress of Mexico, the Empress in Mexico. And I, I thought to myself, how can I write about the Habsburgs? And I said, por qué no chingados? You know, of course I can, you know? <laughs> of course I can. Because I love Europe. I've studied European culture. I love France. I love England. What am I speaking now? Chinese? I'm speaking English. I was an English major. So just because I love my own origins does not mean that I cannot appreciate other origins and other cultures. I appreciate Asia for everything that it is. And above all, I appreciate Africa, Mother Africa, and trying to connect with that. So here we are in America, here we are in Maya land, here we are in the continent. Let us hold our hands, form a circle, celebrate our connection with nature, and transcend and climb the tree to the very treetop and beyond into the stars. Gracias. They tell me I have to entertain some questions, a ver. <laughs> we don't want to let him go yet, right? Questions? There's one right over there. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Rolando Arenas from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. ¿Qué tal, Rolando? Orale. I wanted to ask about in La Quiche and in relation to uh, Domingo uh, Martinez, Martinez Paredes. Paredes. And if you got the chance to meet El Gran uh, General uh, Andres Segura Grandos. Claro. And if you could share a little bit about that. Okay, we had our first Chicano festival. Actually, it started in 1969. In 1969, the Teatro Campesino was invited to uh, the World Theater Festival in Nancy, France. And uh, we, we performed for the French, obviously, and for uh, the world there. But I met the wife of uh, the Colombian playwright uh, Enrique Buenaventura. Uh, Jacqueline was her name. Uh, she had a French name. But anyway, uh, Jacqueline says, uh, I love your work. The Teatro Campesino reminds me of the Mascarones. And I said, who are the Mascarones? She said, well, it's a group in Mexico City. The following year, we organized the first Festival de Teatro Chicano in Fresno, California. And uh, so we had a few funds from the university, and so I invited the Mascarones to come. I, at that time, I was teaching the first uh, Chicano Studies course, you know, at Fresno State. In 1968, I started. My wife was one of my students, actually. Huh? <laughs> Uh, she was about to graduate, but she, she consented to come into my class, you know. And anyway, the fact is that uh, I'd heard about the Mascarones, did not know their work, and, but I made it possible, we made it possible for them to come to the festival. And it was amazing. They did Poesia Coral. They were a tremendous hit. So we invited them back. And that fall, they, brand, they brought Andres Granados, or uh, Andres Segura Granados, Capitan de Danza. And uh, we had uh, actually an amazing interchange. Uh, it, uh, I'd, I'd never seen a conchero dance before. I'd never seen that danza azteca. It blew me away without needing to exaggerate any more than that, you know. I remember seeing him dance uh, in an audit a junior high school auditorium. We, we, we were performing for students. And, and I was standing on the, on the wings of the stage, and I heard a, a choir singing. He was dancing, playing the mandolina, right? La concha. And, and with his feathers and everything. He was the only one dancing. And then I heard, I heard voices. I said, what the hell is this? The mascarones must be singing on the other side of the stage. And so I went around the back to the other side of the wings. And no, I, there was nobody there. I looked out in the audience, and there were the mascarones sitting in the audience. I said, so who's singing? The singing was coming from the concha. The voices were coming from the concha, the mandolina. And that, I mean, it's a freaky, you know what I mean? It was a shock. I said, who is this guy? And he had a bit of an encounter with us too, you know? It, it wasn't the easiest thing for him. But through uh, but Maestro Andres Segura, who became like a brother, we met uh, Domingo Martinez Paredes, a Maestro Domingo Mart in 72. A and we went to his house, and I was blown out because he lived with his daughter and his wife, 
And he made the living, he made living a living by writing people's letters, Escribano. And I thought that was tragic because he'd lost his job at the university. He used to be a catedratico at the UNAM. But because of controversies about Mayan studies with, with actually foreigners, you know, from Europe and from the United States, it, they disputed his, his interpretations. Uh, they released him. So he was just barely surviving. But he had his books. And so he made his books available to me directly. And he gave me an adurista, actually, the Chicano poet, the, the permission to translate them. Now, I, I started to translate them, but I found that it, it, his method, a language is a soul. So his method of describing things did not translate easily into English. It was a real conundrum for me. But I understood it on another level, so I began to incorporate his ideas into the work of El Teatro Campesino. So today we teach the Vibrant Being Workshop based on his ideas now translated into movement. The power of zero, which is a spiral, okay? It represented by the concha. The reason that the concha, it represents zero for the Maya is because zero is a spiral. We talk about vibration, again, are we, and, and the world vibrates. You know, we, we live in a spiral galaxy for Pete's sake. The earth is, is spinning on its axis slightly off its axis, and, and at the same time that we're spinning an axis, we're vibrating, we're going around in a huge spiral called the galaxy. Now, if that is happening, how can it not be happening in us? It's happening in all of us. A tree is a spiral. If you look at the way that the branches come, and if you're a campesino and you estás podando los árboles, you understand, you know, it's like my suegro, God bless him, one day when he was cutting a tree in our backyard, He's, he said, aquí está el patrón, he said. He was going to create what the branch was going to be because he was pruning it. But he understood the balance of it. And the thing is that a tree is a spiral. Nature is a spiral. Time is a spiral. You are a spiral. You spiral in 10-year progressions, whether you know it or not. Take your, take your age and add the digits. And it's somewhere between one and nine and then zero, okay? If, if, if you're, uh, let's say it's your 12, that's a three. 14, that's a five. 16, that's a seven. 18, that's a nine. Now between 18 and 19, something interesting happens. The nine and the one. 19 is one plus nine, that's 10, right? That's a zero, that's a, zero. That's a one. But from nine to one, again, it's zero. That's your zero year. So if you are 19, if you're 18, you're in your zero year. If you are 27, you are in your zero year. If you're 36, you are in your zero year. 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, you're in your zero year. And a zero year is a powerful year. And then you go through the whole progression. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine is your completion. And then you start again. You know, you're always spiraling in your life. And you've got to know why these things happen to you. They happen to you because you're part of a spiraling universe. You're part of a vibrant universe. And medicine should incorporate these rhythms because time is not a straight line. Time is not a straight line. It is a spiral. All these things I deduced and learned from Maestro Paredes. All right. Otra pregunta? No? Going once? Going twice? Gone. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Hasta luego. So, uh let us please give our gratitude one more time to Luis Valdez. 
We are also very fortunate that uh, Luis has agreed to stay for a few minutes to do autographs and to help us with our fundraiser for scholarships and for programming like this one. So we are bringing in the t-shirts and the posters and the flyers for sale. Of course, you're welcome to line up and say hello or get an autograph without purchasing, but we hope that you'll uh, buy something just to help out our students. The uh, flyers are a dollar, the posters are 10, uh, and we have t-shirts from 20 to 30. The, we have our beautiful model right here, Bardo Padilla. Raise your hand, Bardo. <laughs> Modeling, we, we of course get El Mas Guapo, right? <laughs> to, to model for us. <laughs> and uh, the, the event t-shirts are 30. So please uh, reach into your hearts and into your pockets to help out our students and uh, with their scholarships. And you can, uh, if you would line up on this side, you can just come and just say hello to Luis if you'd like. You don't have to purchase anything if you don't want to. But um, if you'd line up on this side and come through and he'll be sitting here. We have him for maybe another, what time is it? Uh, almost three? So we have him for actually for another uh, 15, 20 minutes. So come on up and um, Come on up and meet uh, a legend, a living legend. I think this is going to be the equivalent of a break. So during this break, I have a quick announcement. The, los maestros que empezaron aquí, nos tenemos que ir al Instituto de Idioma Indígena en la Universidad. Entonces, los voy a llevar, creo que son cuatro. Ya, Yasmin, ¿dónde está Yasmin? Entonces, los, los que estuvieron aquí, o sea, y es como emergencia porque teníamos que ir antes. Uh, bueno, y es todo. Um, let's see. Creo que hay como, como, faltan como ocho. I think there's about eight my educators right now here. And my car only fits four. I should get a volunteer. But either way, so I think four are going to stay and uh, four are going to go. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, so, so as we leave, I just have a quick thing to say, and I know it's going to be difficult because of the situation here, but what I wanted to say is that when I went to the Yucatan for a year, you know, I, I knew the work of Luis Valdez, and I knew the work of um, Domingo Martinez Paredes. But being there in that entire year, I actually got to meet Fidencio and all the other scholars here. And I can guarantee you that their knowledge is that and even higher than from 50 years ago. The, the main reason is because they're alive and it's a living culture. Anyway, so thank you very much. Again, a few of them are going to stay, but we got to take them over there. Thank you. Bye. Uh, I know you're all listening even though you're talking, right? We are multitaskers. So I just wanted to make sure that I introduce to you Dr. Roberto Sintli Rodriguez, uh, professor of Mexican-American studies at the University of Arizona. Roberto has been crucial. He's been the vital, central, centrifugal force of the conference that's going on over four to five days that we are a part of. And uh, he has been a camarada en armas un compañero de adeveras y este un luchador y, com, y compañero de, de lucha. So I, let's, would you please uh, give a hand for Dr. Rodriguez, who's been a vital force of this whole conference. Well, one last thing, uh, Yasmin announced a, a concert this evening. What's going on is that Raices Gallery, there's going to be poetry from the entire community, including the Maya educators. So I'll see you there. Uh, tonight at 6, and uh, tomorrow at 7. We're, okay, tonight is Raices, tomorrow at the Global Justice Center. Uh, there's a run for women, murdered and missing indigenous women at, at sunrise. Uh, look at the website. And then, really important, the 1.30 to 4.30, there's a session on migrant 
and indigenous women. It's going to be powerful. Thank you very much. Gracias, Roberto.